What's up everybody, welcome back to more Final Fantasy X, the HD Remastered Edition. And in our previous uh, episode we got to the third temple in our pilgrimage and met another summoner who was a kind of much more normal summoner, the kind of the kind of person we were expecting to see. So he's not quite as fun as Donna, but we will also be seeing Isaru again throughout the throughout the game. And I think I'd already dealt with everything around here, so head straight into the Cloister of Trials. The Cloister of Trials lies within. Are you prepared? Hell yes. My body is ready. Alright! Guardians, at attention! We are ready. All right, let's do it. Right, so they're going to get progressively more difficult, I did say, and obviously that's what logic would dictate as well. And this is a step up from the from the Kilika one, but obviously it's still not, you know, none of these cloisters are particularly, you know, challenging, but I guess it's easy to say when you've done them so many times, but I'm sure that the first couple of times I did them, it did take a little while. So I might as well tell you from the start because it might take you a while to figure this one out. Uh, the way to to complete this is, as you can see, there's a I think this is a Yevon symbol that you see around here, and parts of it are not yet illuminated. And uh, the way to to progress in this closer trials is to eventually illuminate everything. So how did we do this? Hold on a sec. Did I touch that first or? No, okay. So obviously this eventually needs to get lifted, but these spheres don't seem to be producing the, the glyphs that we need. So what we're gonna do. You need like a, a special, more highly powered version of the Jose sphere in order to unlock that door. So that involves kind of powering this thing up. And then once we push this in there, the the sphere that we have on this um, on this pedestal should become like a a supercharged sphere. There we go. <laughs> right. So now, if we try to put this one in, hopefully that should produce the desired effect. Thank God he's got them gloves, otherwise he'd probably get electrocuted. Okay. There is one more sphere down there, but obviously we have no way of getting across. So usually you'd probably mess around and try and do some stuff, but I will show you what to do. You have to put two Jose spheres in there. If you put one, it's not going to work. So put a couple of them in there. Then you need to push the pedestal into the electricity. And if you put two Jose spheres in there, it should stay afloat, I guess. Come on. It's a bit annoying, sometimes it doesn't. There you go. <laughs> So it's a mixture of running forward and pressing X in order to get him to, to do that. So that's the one that you normally wouldn't have been able to illuminate, so thanks to this room we're able to get that one. And all that remains is to get those, uh, those two on the side, and obviously the one up top, so let's do that. We don't need that room anymore, so we can take the, the supercharged sphere and just use it as a normal one. I've always thought this was a pretty cool looking symbol. If I ever had to... If I ever got a tattoo, I'd probably... The first thing I'd ever get is a ta is a, like a little tattoo of this game. And I'd either get the, the Tidus symbol, the one that's uh, just above his knee. 
like on, on my wrist or something, like a smaller, small one. I don't particularly like big, kind of massive tattoos, it's not my thing. But I'd either get like that Yevon sign, but because that's a religious sign, I think that wouldn't, for me, that wouldn't quite be right. So, yeah, the, the symbol on uh, Titus's leg is in first place. And just in case you don't know, this is kind of, I think this is like a family crest. Because if you notice, uh, Jekt also has it in the scenes where you see Titus's father. So, you know, flashbacks or on the billboard and all that kind of stuff. He has this, uh, this symbol as well. So that's like a family crest. And as far as I know, the design of it is derived from uh, the letters T and J. So Titus and Jekt. So you can kind of see it in there. So yeah, a little bit of extra information. And if you notice, something popped up over here. Destruction sphere. Cool. So there's nothing particularly interesting to do here. All that's going to happen is you need to push these um, pedestals in. And then you'll be done with this puzzle. This is a bit unnecessary to be honest, but... It's got to be done. If you want those hidden Aeons, you're going to have to do it. There's two more hidden Aeons that we can get, just, to, just so you know. One of them, like I mentioned earlier, is Anima, the one we've seen from Seymour. And another one is a is one that you would not know about at all from the main game. So we'll, uh, I'll explain that one when I get to it. But you need the um, you need to get the distraction spheres in order to get Anima, and you need to get Anima in order to get the final hidden Aeon that we're going to be getting. So it all kind of adds up. So, um, there we have it. So, a little bit time consuming, but we got a magic sphere. Lulu is going to start to become overpowered. But to be honest, because she's the only one that can use black magic, then. I mean, for physical enemies, you can have two or three players attacking at the same time. So, for, for Lulu to be able to kill stuff easily in one hit is just going to save me time, especially in the random encounters. So in terms of actual damage dealing potential, Lulu is far and away the the most advanced character at the moment. And Kimari is the strongest physically, so that's interesting. But the HP keeps on rolling in for Auron. <laughs> okay, let's head in. Cutscene time. Alright, let's chat to everyone, let's see what they have to say. Stop pacing around, be calm and wait. Okay man, not everyone's like you. Not everyone's a cool cat. You should try to settle down. Yuna will be blamed if anything happens. Well, well, you again. Still traveling with quite the crowd, I see. What is it, Bartello? You know this riffraff? You are... Are it, no? What of it? Can I shake your hand? Arin. No, Sir Arin. You're the reason I became a guardian. Thank you, sir. This means so much to me. Calling the personal guardian the Lord Braska Riffraff? And you call yourself a summoner? Yeesh. Bartello, enough. Get back here. Hang in there, buddy. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Donna. Lost all your swag there, didn't you? 
So yeah, she came in thinking she was all cool, and then that happened. So once again, Oren, you know, Oren stealing the show yet again. Start pacing around. All right, okay, all right, calm down. Quite the show, yeah. Not so good on the heart, though. I've always liked Bartello. Yes, okay, Donna's a bitch, but uh, Bartello's quite a funny guy, I have to say. And he kind of idolizes Oren, so. You should try to settle down. Pick spot. Shut up. Wait. <laughs> okay, so we're getting somewhere. He's talking to me. But <laughs> not quite how I'd uh, want him to be. Sir Oren too? And I hear Maester Seymour is quite taken with you. The world must look different when you're the daughter of Lord Braska. This has nothing to do with my father. I'm traveling on my own, as a full-fledged summoner. Oh, is that so? Then try standing on your own two legs for once. Your guardians won't be able to protect you when the time comes. Ouch. She's still got her claws out, even after something like that. <laughs> that Don is crazy, seriously. Okay. We're done? We're leaving once Yuna gets here. Oh. No matter how dark the night, morning always comes. And our journey begins anew. Look at that quotable from you, from Lulu. Seriously. She's the best. Get ready for the journey ahead. I mean, she's literally... Oren and Lulu like practically the same person, just ten years apart and different genders. Donna has left. Isaru too. Well, thirteen years. Oren's thirty-five, from what I remember. Even though he looks about fifty. So in order to progress the story, we need to find out what Yuna is doing. And we have quite a funny little scene. Not this one. I'm going back to Besaid. With Luzu gone. Yeah. It'd be hard fighting alone, wouldn't it? Most of the other Crusaders have already left. I'll go soon. I'd have to say I feel sorry for him, even though a lot of people hate Gatter and find him annoying. After Luzu dies, I do find him, I do get a bit sympathetic for him. Um, let me... I want to see if Luzu's still in there. I think we can get the treasure chest that was blocked before. Because otherwise I'm going to forget. Yep, Luzu is gone. So there you go, guys. That is, uh, that's all we're going to see of him, unfortunately. Switch hitters tend to have strength boost, eight percent. That's not bad at all. But because he already had a strength plus four sphere, he's already doing pretty well. So the status effect is more important for him. So Yuna's had a bit of a tough time recently, and she's probably and she's understandably very tired. So, you know, we wouldn't really want to disturb her or wake her up or anything like that. She was working until dawn. Healing the wounded. Sending the fallen. Okay. I guess I'll just let her sleep for now, then. <sighs> ah. Morning. What? Morning? Don't worry. But it's morning. <sighs> I'm so sorry. I'll get ready right away. Just a moment. Oh, oh. Don't worry. It's okay. No, sleepy head. Sorry. I'm so sorry. 
Please forgive me. Really, there's no rush. Here. Your hair. <laughs> A summoner with bad hair. What's the world coming to? You could have woken me up. Uh, we called to you. But with all that snoring... Uh, oh. mm. What is it today? Everyone's picking on me! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you too, Sir Oren? Once Lady Yuna fixes her hair, we leave. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't really laughed like that in a long time. It was only later that I realized. The only one really laughing then was me. Laughing must have been the only thing keeping them going. Well, I kind of laughed a bit there as well. But I guess since the game, in the game you, you basically are Titus. I guess when he says me, he kind of means the player as well. Okay, so bye bye Jose Temple. I can't foresee a reason why I'd ever return here again. So, yeah, it was real. Okay, I think they've stopped giving us stuff now. <laughs> Another one of my favorite OST tracks. Off so early? Lady Yuna, you must be exhausted after working so hard last night. Will you be okay? <laughs> I feel that I have rested enough, but thank you for your kindness. Will you be leaving too? Yes. First we cross the moon flow, and then we head north in search of chocobos to replace those we have lost. Once we find chocobos, our mounted forces will ride again. Huh? Aren't you missing someone? Captain! Wait for me! What took you so long? We're leaving. <sighs> you expect me to keep up with a chocobo? Lady Yuna, I wish you good fortune. Elma, Clasco, let's go. Ma'am. Hey, can I just rest a sec? No complaints. I think I figured out what, why I dislike Yuna's um, character model in the HD remaster a little bit less. It seems to me like sometimes, actually, this guy's a this guy's a pretty decent blitzer early on at low levels, as far as I know. But we're not going to sign him. Uh, when we have the the version of Yuna that we see from further away, her hair seems kind of darker, and she just she just looks like. She just looks different, but when we have the more close-up ones, like the one we had in the scene back there where everyone was laughing, that one looked more like the Yuna from the PS2 version. And uh, I think when, when she looks like that, then she kind of looks like you know the Yuna that that a lot of us know and love. But when she's further away, she just kind of looks just off, like a little bit different. So I think that's the reason why I don't quite like her as much as I do in the PS2 version. But when she has the version with the dark, with the lighter coloured hair, she does look better. And in the FMVs, like I've already said. Where to next? We cross the Moonflow. Gotcha! Moonflow baby, here we come! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, this is a, a stretch of road where you're probably going to meet one of the more difficult random encounters that you might see. Okay, there's some chests here. Ah, first time round. Okay. 7,200. That is a lot of HP to deplete. So, okay, our characters are doing well, but that's still quite a high amount. And at the end of the day, if you encounter four or five of these, even Lulu's MP is going to start to struggle here. 
then again, a lot of people that have spent more time kind of uh, leveling up might have the second level spells here, and that will help me get through this bit quicker. But as you can see, it, it poisons you pretty consistently, so that's also annoying. <laughs> can't believe these are the strongest characters, it's hilarious. Summoner Yuna, ready. See, it worked again. So you might beat this guy once, you might beat this guy twice, and you might start getting frustrated with him. Obviously, that that leaves you with two choices: either you can escape, or you can do something else. So, we bought the the TKO for Waka. Fucking hell, got me again. <coughs> we bought the TKO for Waka from Owaka, and the reason why the reason why the TKO is a smart move is because it can do that. So you don't have to spend too much time dealing with Ochu. Easy, right? And I think it's susceptible to sleep as well. So Waka is pretty key in that battle. Speaking of keys. Ah, oh, shit. 